Good morning and welcome to all those visiting and worshiping with us today, as well as to those joining us via the live stream. Please, in courtesy, silence all electronic devices. Just one announcement this morning. This weekend is the Catholic Relief Services Collection. Those who did not bring an envelope can place a contribution in the gathering space basket. Thank you for your support. Please also remember in your prayers the Norris Humpert Fryman families for whom this Mass is offered. Let us take a moment in silent prayer to recall that we are gathered as the body of Christ to pray and sing God's praises.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we find how in our baptism we accept the peace that he offers as questions arise in our hearts. By sprinkling of the holy water, may we be reminded that his heart is burning with love for us. So we ask him to bless this water created for us so that it might be sprinkled upon us in memorial of our baptism and be drawn ever closer to Christ and his resurrection. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made this water an instrument of your mercy, for through it you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed your new covenant, and Asked of all through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, provide us a bath of regeneration. May this water be for us a memorial of our baptism, a share in the gladness of our sisters and brothers who at Easter received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed usefulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the books of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, whom he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, 
the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. This week we were witnesses to a total solar eclipse. Lots of awareness of it occurring, perhaps more than Indiana residents liked people knowing. So many visitors coming out to be with them slowing traffic of coming in and going home. In 1806, there was also a total solar eclipse, one that the Shawnee chief Tecumseh and his brother, their tribal prophet, knew was going to occur. They decided to use this knowledge and the fact that their fellow Shawnee and other associated tribes were ignorant to it to their advantage. For 
Governor William Henry Harrison had been attempting to make a separate peace with each of the individual tribes of their confederation. They decided that this would be a good opportunity for them to allow the eclipse and telling all of their associates that they were going to make the day dark to then hope that that influence would lead them to join together. They knew something was going to naturally occur, and yet what was going to naturally occur would give them the seeming influence of the supernatural. Certainly an eclipse of that variety, as it was for us, is quite an extraordinary event. As I was standing up in our cemetery, watching it occur, it was fun to hear the entire town of Harrison erupt with applause as soon as it got dark. This is not an everyday experience, and yet it is a part of our natural order. Eating is an everyday experience, a necessary part of our natural order, and that is what Jesus asks his disciples to witness. He asks for something to eat and then decides to have that meal in front of them. A silly joke you may have heard many times. A skeleton walked into a bar and asked for a drink and a mop. Well, Jesus digested just fine. The fish did not drop to the ground. The fact of his wounds perhaps was not enough to convince them that he was still the Jesus they knew. The fact of the eating reinforces this as he then continues to invite them to understand the normalizing of the fact of his resurrection amidst the extraordinary reality of its presence. For unlike Tecumseh and his brother's attention to an eclipse, this is not them making it happen. It is Jesus providing for us something outside of our ordinary experience, but what must become an ordinary part of our experience, his peace. The peace which our First Communion students didn't feel yesterday until after they had received Holy Communion. They were appropriately nervous. We try to dissuade that nervousness in terms of what it will be like to receive the host or the precious blood by allowing them to sample an unconsecrated host, unconsecrated wine, in their practice time before. We don't want the reaction to be to that part of it and yet recognizing that it is going to be the normal part of receiving Holy Communion. Nerves, too, about everybody watching them. Something nice about blending in, and yet being the focal point makes all of us a little nervous. I tried to make them feel a little better by telling them that I get nervous every single time I stand up here to give my homily. It's a good thing, an ordinary thing, a normal thing, but meant to be something extraordinary. Not my words, but whose words I'm sharing. The words of our Eucharistic prayer remind us that we are meant to be an eternal offering to the Father from Christ. The way in which we are offered is the way in which Jesus offers himself to us. His miracle of the feeding of the multitudes, at which five loaves and two fish were provided, but by taking, blessing, breaking, and giving thousands were able to eat, not just to their fulfillment, but that there was an abundance left over. We find ourselves invited today to find the way in which our ordinary experience of this extraordinary reality of the risen Christ is for us, grounded in the offering given to us so that we may find ourselves in receiving this great gift taken, blessed, broken, and given, to find ourselves then a part of this extraordinary reality. Not something to come between the light and others, but rather something to reveal and point to the prominence of the light. We are witnesses of these things and meant to be more than witnesses. For the witness in faith then leads to the following of discipleship nourished as he himself was nourished, longing to be given as he himself has offered.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With trust in the peace of the risen Christ, we present these prayers of intercession. hope as you have called us may our sharing in this body and blood of Christ nourish our joy in you for you live and reign in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Seek 
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you've given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that these gifts may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, when this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he set the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you through passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.